Real estate agents, are you looking for ideas for your next video that will get you views and subscribers on your YouTube channel and connect you with buyers and sellers? Then this video is for you. Stick around and learn how to pick your next video. I'm Elise Michelle Nelson. I'm a YouTube business strategist and lead generator, which means I help you use video to create visibility and generate leads for your business. Today, we're talking about finding the best ideas for real estate videos that get views in this Gamify Your Business video. Here's the game plan for today. We're going to use this four-sided dice to decide where to get our next video idea for realtors. Each side of the dice is going to represent a different strategy. Let's see all of our options. The very first thing that we could be doing is we could be stealing from others. This is where we're going to go to someone else's channel who is in the same niche, and we are going to look at their videos, what did the best, what did the worst, and use that as inspiration for our next videos. The second option is to remake one of our existing videos. And this is where we're gonna to go to our own channel, look at the stats, and determine what video we might want to remake that did well previously. Third, we could do a frequently asked questions video. For this video, we'll actually use Google search to help us find the questions that people are asking about our niche and then give them the answers they're looking for. And then finally, we could be talking about a product or a service. In this instance, we are going to actually walk through a specific product or service that we offer. And that way, when we talk about that product or service in other videos, we can refer them to the video that is all about that product or service. But now it's time to clear the board so that we can play. Before we continue, please like this video and drop your niche in the comments if you'd like me to do a video like this for your industry. Let's go ahead and roll the dice. We got a three. That means we are going to be looking up on Google search questions that people have about real estate. So here we are on Google search. We're gonna go ahead and put in a keyword. So depending upon what kind of real estate agent you are, you might put something different in here. I'm gonna put home buying. So you might also try real estate or realtor or commercial real estate or something like that, depending upon your niche. But we're gonna go ahead and go with home buying. We're gonna scroll down until we see people also ask. And when you see people also ask, you're gonna open all four to five of these. Usually there's four to five questions showing. And you're gonna open and close them without actually reading what's inside. The goal is just to open and close them because when you do that, it will expand the number of questions that you have and we'll be able to better look at it and see which questions we might want to answer. So I'm going to show you what that looks like now. So you can see we started with four and now we have many more than four. And if you wanted even more than that, you could just open and close some more questions and it would give you more ideas. So let's go ahead and take a look at these questions. So this is buying a house for beginners. Now I'm located in Texas, so you'll see one of the questions that came up is specifically about Texas. So depending upon your location, this would be a really good way for you to put your location in here because obviously as a real estate agent, you wanna find buyers and sellers that are in your specific area, not in other places. Is it cheaper to just buy a house? Okay, so this would be like rent versus buy, beginners, location, how much should you put down, a credit score. So in just these few questions, we have all the questions that somebody would probably ask. And even before we looked this up on Google, you probably already knew what these questions were. But by doing this Google search, we have the exact phrasing of how someone might look it up. So most of these, down payment salary, these are all repeats. These are all questions that seem pretty obvious to me for a real estate agent. So let's go ahead and just pick one. What we're gonna do is, I'm not sure, I'm not a real estate agent, I haven't really um, worked with many real estate agents, although I've worked with a couple, so I'm not really sure which of these questions is best for you. I don't have a knee-jerk reaction. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and copy these questions, and we're gonna go over to youtube.com, I can't type today, and we're just gonna paste the question in here, we're gonna remove the question mark, and we are going to use the tools vidIQ and TubeBuddy to get a rank on these words, these specific phrases. And our goal is gonna to be to get a green score from both vidIQ and TubeBuddy so that we know that the likelihood is pretty good that these particular phrases that we're using will be found via search. The reason it's important to be found via search is because search is everlasting. I've personally worked with multiple clients who spent time building a YouTube channel and then stepped away for years and continued to see new leads and clients come through those channels. For a real estate agent, this is incredibly important 
possibly even more so than the other businesses that I work with, because you have to have a constant flow of new buyers and sellers coming into your door. So what better way than being found anytime someone does a search on Google or YouTube because they're connected, they're owned by the same company, when someone asks a question about buying or selling a home. So this is going to be especially important for you as a real estate agent, and we want to make sure that we're trying to find the best ranking keywords we can find. And by using the Google search and the people also ask section, it's giving us a really good head start. So you're not having to spend so much time looking for keywords. So let's go ahead and see what we got. So we got how does buying a house in Texas work? So this one is a 54 from vidIQ. You can see vidIQ here. If you don't have vidIQ and TubeBuddy installed, there's a link in the description of this video. It is my affiliate link. I might get paid a small commission if you choose to use it, but you don't have to get the paid versions. You can use the free versions and still get these ranking numbers. So this one is a 54. It's yellow, so it's not green. That's from vidIQ. And TubeBuddy is 100. It is green. So we're good on TubeBuddy. Let's go ahead and look at our next question. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. So right now we've done one, we had a 54 was our highest. Oh, we wanna always remove the question mark. Okay, so 47, so that one's not better. So the second one right now is the best one. Okay, so the second one is still the best because that one's a 49. This one's a 52, the other one was a 54, so the second one is still the best. Okay, this one is a 61 from vidIQ, so this is better. Let's go ahead and look at what we get from TubeBuddy, a 42. So on this one, you'll see vidIQ gave us a really high score and TubeBuddy gave us a lower score. Whereas when we were doing the previous searches, we saw it the other way around. And so this is really an interesting thing to happen because it's something that happens in a lot of industries where one of the tools will like your search better than the other. This is why it's so important to try and make sure that both of them like it because it's giving you a higher chance of doing well, right? I have a lot of clients who are like, at least I just couldn't find any words. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it because this one said it was okay. But if you, by tweaking just a few small things, you may be able to get that to work better for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. We're gonna open a notepad. So this one was a 61 and a 42. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because it's gonna be harder for me to remember now that we've got them switching. So let's go ahead and go back to the second one so that I can put that one down also because I know that one was also one of the higher numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on. So we did this one. Let's do this one. That one's a 55. So this is actually the highest we've gotten on vidIQ. Let's see what TubeBuddy thinks. Okay, so this one is definitely the best one so far. So let's go ahead and put this one on our list. So this one is a 55 and an 89. Now I want to talk about this one up here. I don't, it was a 54 and a 100. The TubeBuddy score on this one is 100 and this one is only 89. So you would think that this one must be better because TubeBuddy gave it such a high score. But the reality is with TubeBuddy, it often will give you 100 for a lot of things. And then it'll change those numbers just very slightly when there's a different search. So the 100 on TubeBuddy doesn't mean as much as if it was 100 on vidIQ. I actually don't think I've ever seen 100 on vidIQ. So I, I know that this 100 on TubeBuddy doesn't really mean a whole lot. So dropping it down to an 89 is totally fine. Our goal is for both of these numbers to be in the green. So an 89 is just as green as 100, so that's totally fine. 55 is our highest score with an acceptable TubeBuddy score. So even though this one is a 61, 42 is not acceptable. So right now, this is our winner so far. We're gonna keep going. Let's see what our next question is. If you're wondering why I'm opening these, it's because opening them makes it possible to copy them. If you don't open them, you can't really copy them. At least that's how it works on my computer. If yours is different, feel free to not open them. Okay, so now you got a 58, so that is awesome. Let's see what TubeBuddy gives us. There we go, a 58 and an 80. So we are getting much, much closer. This one is much, much better. Let's go ahead and put that one in here. 58 and an 80. Okay, let's see what our next question is. Okay, 49, so that one's not even worth looking at. Oops. All right, so a 67. Let's see what vidIQ and a 90. All right, so this one is green, yay! We've got a green question, so this one is green. And then this one is also green. So this is the one that we would want to use. How much money should I save before buying a house in Texas? This is a question that I'm sure as a real estate agent, you are perfectly capable of answering. I'm sure that there are some caveats and all of those kind of good things, but this will make a really interesting video. And we know it's a topic that people are asking about on Google and we're getting a good keyword ranking score on YouTube. Now, one of the questions you may be asking yourself is, 
or wanting to ask me is Elise, does it really matter if I have ranking keywords? Because I see a lot of videos that say it's not important. And I know the videos you're talking about and I totally understand why you might feel that way. But let me answer this question for you. One of the reasons that people say this is because they're dealing with entertainment channels and entertainment channels are not based around search most of the time. As opposed to a business channel, which is 100% based around search, your ultimate goal is to make sure that people are finding you forever so that you don't have to go out looking for them. That's what you need as a real estate agent. So does having ranking keywords guarantee that you are going to have videos that are going to be seen and are going to generate clients and customers? No, it is a drop in the bucket. If you have terrible content, it doesn't matter if you have ranking keywords because people won't watch. If you aren't taking the time to make sure that you're doing things like having good thumbnails and good titles that draw attention, then having ranking keywords will not help you. But ranking keywords are a way for you to communicate, especially as a small channel, effectively to YouTube what it is that you're trying to do and effectively to your audience that you have the answers to their questions. And so it helps you, it gives you that little extra boost that can push you beyond not being seen to being seen. And the big goal with YouTube is to make sure you get seen because once you get seen and they watch your content and consume it, YouTube sees your content is good and shows it to more people. And so getting that initial view is really important, especially as a small channel starting out. So is it worth the time? We just took a few minutes to find a, a good question that we know people are looking for on Google the number one search engine in the world. And then we took a few extra minutes to find which of those questions were best on YouTube, the second largest search engine in the world, which means you have now improved the likelihood of showing up for both of those two places by taking a few minutes to do the keyword research. So is the keyword research worth it? In my opinion, I don't wanna spend hours and hours making a video that I know is unlikely to help me. Think about it, you're doing ideation, you're doing some type of scripting, figuring out what you wanna say, then you're gonna do your recording, then you've gotta do editing, then you've got to create your descriptions and get it uploaded and posted, and all of those things takes time. I would rather spend 15 or 20 minutes at the beginning making sure that I have stuff that is likely to be searched for before I spend those hours in creating the video content. And it is something that really can help you in your business. So I recommend that you take the time to do this. Now I have tons of other ideas of ways for you to find the right content for your videos. So make sure that you check out the Create Visibility and Generate Leads with YouTube playlist and watch the other videos where I will be helping you with more ideas on how to create content for your business. And for those of you looking for a deeper dive, you're gonna to wanna to check out the YouTube cohort for personalized help where I will walk you through step by step how to use YouTube as your number one source of leads and sales for your small business. To sign up, you can go to myschedulebiz.com slash cohort. I am so glad that we get to live our dreams together every single day and I hope to see you next time. Bye.